In this video, I'm going to go over an example of merging two sorted arrays in C. So we'll start off with our two sorted arrays. I'm going to have an array A1 with 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 in it, and an array A2 with 2, 4, 5, 6, 8 in it. And the idea is that our result array would look something like this. You'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, where the resulting array after merging these two sorted arrays would also be sorted itself. And, you know, if you've got repeating elements like this, it doesn't really matter which one of these fives come from which one of these arrays here. That doesn't really matter. The point is, is we've got all the elements from both of these arrays in the same sorted order in the resulting array. That's what we want to end up with. So we're going to make a function that's going to do this. And we'll have the function accept two arrays as arguments along with their lengths. And it'll also accept an array to store the result in. So we'll say int a m for the length of a, int b and then int n for the length of b, and then int r, an array to store the result. And then we'll provide a definition of this function down here. And the idea is we'd call the function like this. If I had like int r 10, so I've got an array that can store 10 integers in it, then I would call the function like this. I would say merge a1 has five elements in it, a2 has five elements in it, and r is where we want to store the result. So to solve this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have three counter variables and they're basically going to keep track of the position that I'm currently in, in each of these three arrays. So there's going to be a counter variable for a one that's keeping track of which element are we looking at now in a one. And we're going to go through them one at a time. We're going to have a counter variable for a two that's going to look at which element are we looking at now in a two. And then we're going to have a counter variable for R that's going to be keeping track of which index are we storing the next value from either a1 or a2 into. So we'll make our three counter variables. I'll say int i is equal to zero, j is equal to zero, and k is equal to zero. And i is going to be the counter variable for a, j is going to be the counter variable for b, and k is going to be the counter variable for r. And then we'll have a loop. And we'll say while i is less than m and j is less than n and what we're doing here is we're checking to make sure in this first loop here that we haven't gone past the length of either a which has length m or b which has length n by looking at the counter variable that we're using i for a and the counter variable j we're using for b and what we're going to do is we're going to first look at okay Looking at i and j, which are keeping track of which element are we currently looking at in a1 and a2 respectively, we're going to say, okay, which element between these two arrays that we're currently looking at, according to the counter variable, is lowest? Because whichever of these elements that we're currently looking at in each array is lowest, that's the one that we want to store next into r, right? We're, we're, kind, of be, we're kind of going to be peeling off, essentially, and storing the next lowest element between these two arrays where i and j are being used to keep track of the element that we're looking at next in each array so we're going to do this comparison here we're going to say here if a at i is less than b at j and remember like i is keeping track of the element that we're currently looking at in a j is keeping track of the element we're currently looking at in b and we're saying like well if the element in this array that we're currently looking at is less than the element in this array that we're, that we're currently looking at, then that's the element that I would wanna store next into this result array here. So if that's the case, then we're gonna say that R at K is equal to A at I. So K is keeping track of where we're storing the next element into this result array here. And so, you know, we're going to say R at K is equal to A at I because that's the next lowest element between these two arrays here. And then because we've kind of stored something into R here, we want, we're going to want to increment K. And at this point here, because we've now identified this as the next lowest element in that, in that it's coming from A, at this point, we want to increment I too. We want to kind of shift up what we're looking at in that array as well. We'll say I plus plus. And then if this is not the case, then we'll do the opposite. We'll say here R at K is equal to b at j and we'll increment k and we'll increment j and what this will do is it's going to keep basically peeling off the next lowest element 
between these two arrays here. It's going to keep peeling off the next lowest element and storing it into R. And it's going to continue to do that until we've reached the end of one of those arrays. Because eventually we will, re we, we will reach the end of one of these arrays. That's going to happen. Now at that point, when we reach the end of one of these arrays here, there's still going to be more elements on the other array. And we're going to need to store those elements into the result array. Um, and so what, what could happen here is that, you know, we reach the end of this array here, A2, and you've still got nine with this array here, A1. There could be more elements though too. There could be like nine, 10, 11, 12. There could be more. And it could be, you know, not that A1 has the remaining elements. It could be that A2 has the remaining elements. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have two while loops here that are going to do basically a bit of a cleanup. And whatever is left in the remaining array is going to be stored into R. So we're going to say here, while I is less than M, R at K is equal to A at I, K plus plus, I plus plus. And what we're doing here is I is going to be less than M if there are elements left to store from A into R. And so this loop is only going to run if there are elements left to store from A into R. And then we're just going to handle the other case, which is what if there are elements left to store in B into R. So we're going to make a, a very similar loop here. We're going to say, wow, J is less than N. RK is equal to BI, K plus plus, J plus plus. Now only one of these loops is ever going to run. Only one of them will ever run because what's going to happen is when we, when we get to the end of this loop, we'll have stored either all of the elements from A1 or all of the elements from A2 into R at that point. But one of the arrays, we don't know which, is going to have more elements remaining. And when, when that happens, these loops will take care of it, whichever it is. So if it's, if it's A that has more remaining elements, this loop will take care of it. If it's B that has more remaining elements, it's this loop that'll take care of it. Okay, so let's give this function a test now. We'll, we'll call it like this. And then we'll print out the elements of R after to see if we've got it right here. So we'll say printf, or we'll do a loop actually. We'll say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10 i plus plus. And we'll do a printf of R percent d is equal to percent d. We'll put i, we'll put R at i. And we'll just throw a, that should be okay actually. All right, so let's give this a test here. We'll do a compilation here. Hopefully there's no bugs, but we'll see. Okay, and we get one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so we've created a function to merge two sorted arrays in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.